The number one thing that has stopped me from going bald. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having a lovely, wonderful, fantastic day. Before we start anything, I just want to say a humongous thank you to everybody who watched my last video about my alopecia. I was entirely overwhelmed with the amount of just kindness and caring and support in the comments, like between different commenters, between people in the community and towards myself. I just, I really was overwhelmed with it. I didn't cry nearly as much as I thought I was going to in the video, but those comments you guys. I was bawling the entire time that I was reading them. I am still gonna try to get back to more of you guys. There's like 3,000 comments and it was just, I was very, very scared to post that video. It's my biggest insecurity. It's one of my biggest fears. And to talk about it so publicly it was incredibly nerve-wracking, but you guys just made it honestly a wonderful experience for me and I just, I can't thank you enough. I did ask if you guys had any questions about alopecia, hair loss, my story, anything like that um, in that video and then on Instagram also and in our community tab. And one of the biggest questions that I got was what have I done to try to regain or keep as much hair as I can? A lot of you guys said you saw a difference between like my initial photos like two years ago and now and uh, I just kind of wanted to share with you guys exactly the products and the things that I have done to regain some hair. Um, it's not it's not a ton of hair, I'm gonna be fully honest. It's, it's kind of hard to see in photos and stuff, but um, I definitely still have a lot of thinning, a lot of thin spots. I definitely still have alopecia. Um, it's probably something that will never fully go away, but I can manage it, try to slow it down some, and hopefully make it look a little better. So that is what we're gonna be doing today. I have a whole list here. I have all my products here. Um, we're gonna be talking about everything that I've really done and like stuck to over the two years. I mean, I've tried just about anything. I've tried just about everything. You know, if there was some like scientific article saying if you go outside and lick the dirt every five minutes, you're gonna help your hair grow back, I probably would have done that. Honestly, the only things I haven't really tried yet are like your standard hair regrowth things. So like monoxide, Oxidil, finasteride, spiraloctin. I haven't done any of those yet and I'm not sure if I ever will to be honest. Uh, maybe one day I will get to that point where I do want to try those more traditional roots for hair loss. For now these are the things that I have really stuck to over the past couple of years and uh, maybe they'll help you guys. Alright, so first and foremost, if you're experiencing hair loss or hair thinning, talk to your doctor. That's the first thing you have to do. You have to talk to your doctor, talk to a dermatologist, you need to find out what is causing your hair loss because there are a million things that can cause hair loss, especially in women. Vitamin and nutritional deficiencies, thyroid issues, hormone issues, PCOS, stress, like there are just so many things that can lead to hair loss and hair thinning, so it's really important to figure out exactly what is causing your hair loss, hair thinning to be able to actually address it. So for me, like I said, there is most likely definitely a genetic component. Um, everybody I've pretty much talked to so far, as far as like dermatologists and doctors have said, it's likely due to genetics in large part. Um, but I also do think there's probably a pretty intense um, nutritional vitamin deficiency issue that I had for several years. So I kind of addressed my hair loss from like a couple of different directions. Um, so that's why <laughs> there's so many things that I've tried. The very first thing that I did when I was trying to adjust my hair loss was change my diet. So I really did like kind of an overhaul of everything that I ate. When I was experiencing a lot of hair loss, hair thinning, hair falling out, um, I was in a time in my life where my diet was really bad. Like I don't know how to, <laughs> I don't know how much I'm going to go into it. But it was it was really bad. Um, I definitely wasn't getting the nutrition that I needed. The things that I was eating was mainly like packaged sweet, tasty stuff, very tasty. But just a lot of things that had very little like nutritional value to them. So uh, when I really started to try to address my hair issues, I also addressed my diet. I started to eat like a more balanced, healthy diet, a lot more proteins and like greens and good carbohydrates, uh, cut down a lot of the processed stuff. I have definitely like wavered, gone up and down on that one. You know, it's it was sticking to a super healthy diet. It, it's hard, it really is hard. But I think one of the things that helped me keep on it, honestly, was I was doing it for my my hair. Like as I was eating four cloves of cooked spinach with like pumpkin seeds on top, I was like, it's for my hair. Just get it in. But there are many ways that you can improve your diet, add some more protein, get some more healthy things in there to help your hair without like just eating spinach and chicken. So with a more balanced diet, I also wanted to make sure I was getting like just as much nutrients into my body, pumping through my veins up to my head as I possibly could. So I also started taking vitamins. 
The amount of vitamins I did take and sometimes still take verges on excessive. Like you probably don't need this many vitamins and it's probably too much for you. And again, talk to your doctor because vitamins can interact with like medicines and different things. Um, I was probably taking too many and I still probably still take too many sometimes. But the things that I've really stuck with have been Nutrafol, which is this right here. This is Nutrafol for women. They have a couple of different types of Nutrafol. They have one for men. They also have some for women that are in the like menopausal stage of their life. But I take four of these kind of yellowy pills every single day. I try to take them with like a nice healthy fat or a meal or something and um, I do believe that this has helped my hair some. If you buy the entire Nutrafol kit it also comes with a stress adaptogen. Adaptogen. Um, and this has sal palmitos. Sal <laughs> what are words? Sal. This doesn't have sal palmitto. I've been taking this for a very long time and I definitely thought it was sal palmetto. Um, but in fact, it's actually a uh, reishi mushroom and some other stuff in it. Uh, and then I also take this hair biotic. So this is like a little set that you can get with Nutrafol, but you can also just buy like the hair wellness vitamins by themselves. The second vitamin that I take was actually the first vitamin that I ever started was this here. This is Viviscal Pro. Uh, this is the professional strength version. I initially got this through my dermatologist who was like a verified seller of it. Um, but I do think there are some places online that also are verified sellers of it. This is an expensive vitamin and honestly so is the Nutrafol especially if you get like the kit. Both of these are very pricey and I'm very very sorry about that but those are like the two that are actually kind of recommended by dermatologists and like actual doctors and things. There are plenty of like hair growth vitamins out there you know there's hair gummies and there's biotin and, and different stuff like that but these two are the ones that I actually like hear from professionals in like dermatology and like actual doctors recommend these two. So those are the two I went for. Um, do I need to take both of them? I, I don't know, um, but I'm too afraid to stop taking either. I did actually stop taking my Viviscal for a little while and thought I could see like my hair was thinning out a little bit more, so I, I restarted. I, I just, I feel like these are probably things I'm going to be on for the rest of my life, and that is incredibly expensive, honestly, for vitamins, like for the rest of the time that I want to keep like the health of my hair up. But with everything that I do for my hair, basically I just look at it and say, all right, if this is like $100 all combined for my vitamins or, or whatever a month. Um, basically, I just look at where I can not spend that elsewhere. So maybe I don't order DoorDash several times a month. Um, and that will be like the offsetting cost of the things that, you know, it, it's important to me to try to keep the health of my hair. So I offset those costs of like, you know, my vitamins with other expenses in my life. Another vitamin that I take all the time is iron. This one is actually called a blood builder and they've somehow made it out of beets and like vegetables and stuff. Uh, but this is an iron supplement. It has vitamin C, folate, vitamin B12, and iron in it and 125 milligrams of beetroot. I don't know, um, but this doesn't upset my stomach. I really do like this iron medicine. When I was nutritionally deficient and not eating very well, during the same time I was going through a lot of hair loss anytime I like stood up kind of quickly or even not very quickly um I would get very dizzy to the point of like blacking out so like my uh vision my field of vision would shrink in really dark I would get really dizzy and have to sit down and uh I think that had a lot to do with potentially an iron deficiency and since my nutrition is better and I started taking iron I really don't have that issue anymore that kind of like dizzy standing up feeling. So as far as vitamins go, those are what I personally take and I will continue to take for as long as I feel the need to. Um, I have tried just like everything else under the sun. Like if it, if it was in vitamin form and it could potentially help my hair, I have tried it. All right, now moving on to shampoos and conditioners. I use the same exact shampoo every single day. Um, this actually isn't the first shampoo that I started using when I was having hair issues, but that one actually was discontinued. So I had to switch shampoos, which really freaked me out to be fully honest, because I thought like, well, what if it's the shampoo that's fixing my hair? And I'm like, I'm never gonna be able to get it again. So all my hair is gonna fall out, you know, very rational thoughts. But I have switched to the shampoo here, which is by Hair Restore Laboratories. Sorry, the bottle's a little crushed up and stuff. This is one I took straight out of the shower. Uh, this shampoo is meant to block DHT in your hair follicles. DHT is what they believe is like the mechanism in genetic hair loss that causes the hair follicle to miniaturize and miniaturize and get thinner and thinner, and then eventually just like entirely fall out. So the DHT like blockers in here are supposed to help 
a hair thinning, reduce hair shed and fall. This also has no parabens, sulfates, any of that kind of stuff in it. You're supposed to leave it on your head for like three to five minutes and it is recommended to use this daily. Um, I have heard, you know, very often that washing your hair daily, it just, it just isn't very good for it. But in like my kind of situation, my case, there is the belief that like DHT can kind of get caught in the sebum follicles, like in your hair. Uh, which can be detrimental for somebody who is sensitive to DHT and losing their hair because of it. So for me personally, in my case, I do wash my hair every single day um, and I do leave this setting on my head for as long as I can to really let it like absorb and set in. The conditioner, on the other hand, I really, I don't condition like my scalp, so I don't really know if this is an actual like anything that has been helping my hair. I don't think so because it's not been working like at the root of it. I'm just afraid because my hair is so thin and fine that conditioner's really gonna weigh it down, but recently I have been kind of like adding it like back here and like to the sides and I haven't noticed much of like a thick kind of like weighed down conditioner feel, which is good because the conditioner actually has like separate ingredients that are supposed to block DHT as well from the shampoo. So maybe they could work together and like help me out even more. I will say that these are very expensive shampoos and conditioners, or at least I think so. I think they're like $30 a piece, which to me is incredibly expensive for how many? 16 ounces worth of product. However, they do run sales quite often and you can get like a buy one, get one free or, you know, they have different sales like that a lot. And when that happens, I try to get as many as I feel comfortable with buying at the moment. So like if they're running a 50% off like mega sale or something, I'll definitely stock up a little bit because they are so expensive. Before I even get in the shower, I do something else to try to reinvigorate my hair, which is oil it. So I oil my hair before every shampoo, which is every single day, and uh, I was using this Kiehl's Magic Elixir, which I did like and was really nice, but I don't know what's happened, you guys. This has, it's gone crazy. It's madness. This is out of stock on like Kiehl's actual website. On that website, it's $22, but you can get it like on Amazon for like 59 bucks. They're reselling at places for like double, triple the money. So uh, I thought that was absolutely insane, but I did like the oil and how it was like working on my hair. So I just decided to make it myself. I, I looked at the ingredients here on the back and it said the first thing was avocado oil, then there is safflower oil, and then eventually down a little bit there is like rosemary. So I decided to take those four oils, purchase them myself in kind of like larger sizes, and then mix them together into this bottle to create my own hair oil. And um, I honestly, I really like it. I think it works pretty well. That way I could also get everything like organic and cold pressed. There's no fragrance added. There's no preservatives, anything like that. So I'm just making my own hair oil and I think it's working out pretty good. So about like a minimum of at least 10 minutes before I shower. If I can leave it on longer, I definitely will. Like this could be like an all day kind of like leave in soap. But if I don't have that much time, I will squirt it on my head before my shower and then I'll flip my head upside down and really, really massage my scalp. Like kind of like yank it like all over the place. And I just think my hair feels a lot nicer after I use an oil or something before I shower. All right, so getting out of the shower, getting ready for the day, the next thing I use is rosemary water. Oh, I forgot to bring my rosemary in here. I was gonna bring much like a just a chunk of rosemary to show you guys. But anyway, I get rosemary from Kroger. It's organic and it comes fresh. Uh, if you have a rosemary plant and you have the ability to keep it alive, that's fantastic. I would go ahead and use that and just trim you off some to use for your rosemary water. But unfortunately, I do not possess the skills to keep rosemary plants or any other plant alive. I take my rosemary sprigs, I give them a rinse, I put them into a little like saucepan with about that much water in it, throw them in there, let that come to a boil. I kind of muddle it a little bit and then I turn it down to a simmer, put the lid on and let it simmer for quite some time to create like a really strongly steeped rosemary water. And then I drain that all into just a glass spray bottle and then I spray it on my hair. I will spray it on my hair, let it set, kind of soak in, and then I will spray it again on my hair and then dry my hair. I don't rinse it out, I just let it set on my scalp and on my hair. All right, and then the last thing that I actually like apply to my hair is rosemary oil. 
So there has actually been a study done with rosemary oil compared to minoxidil, which is the ingredient found in Rogaine. And the study found that rosemary oil had the same effect or even slightly better effect than the minoxidil without the side effects. So um, as soon as I heard that, I started rubbing rosemary oil on my head. So for the rosemary oil, I do purchase that. I don't make it on my own. You can though, there are um, like how to's on YouTube and stuff, uh, but I get this rosemary oil. This is from Now Essential Oils. This is a 100% pure rosemary oil. It comes with two ounces. I think I got this from Thrive Market on sale too. If you guys can get any of this stuff on sale, I highly recommend it. It does say that you are supposed to use this with like a carrier oil of some sort if you're going to apply it directly to the skin. Sometimes I don't listen to instructions, but you definitely should. Um, I have been just kind of applying this directly to my scalp because I haven't seen any type of irritation or reaction to it. There's no burning or itching or anything like that. It's just kind of like a cooling sensation. So, um, <laughs> but you might want to look into that and you probably do want to use a carrier oil, but basically at nighttime before bed, I take a Q-tip, put some of this onto it. I part my hair into like sections where I can see like kind of a scalp line. I rub it on there and then I take this little natural bristle brush and just like ever so slightly massage it into my hair. The rosemary oil I've been doing for quite some time, but this is a new addition. Um, I'm just hoping it'll help stimulate the hair follicle a little bit. Again, like I said, I'm just throwing literally everything at my hair, like <laughs> hoping something will stick and make it better. But truthfully, I think I've honestly seen a good bit of improvement or at least a little bit of improvement improvement in my eyes when I started using the rosemary oil and the rosemary water. Other people have also told me as well that they do see some improvement in my hair kind of recently, so maybe it's working. I hope it is. All right, you guys, and that brings me to the final thing that I do for my hair, which is the most painful, the most expensive, the most time consuming, but also I think the number one thing that has stopped me from going bald. I think without doing this, I would have been to a point where I could have no longer hidden my hair loss and would have probably already been in wigs by now. And that's just my personal thoughts and feelings behind it because I was losing such large mass quantities of hair. And then when I started doing this particular treatment, my hair shedding dropped to like almost none. I've heard different things that people lose from anywhere between like 50 to sometimes up to 200 strands of hair a day. I was losing up to 200 strands of hair just in my shower. And then I started this procedure and my hair shedding in the shower after several months of this procedure dropped to literally five to ten strands. So from like 100 to 200 to 5 to 10. So the very last thing that I do for my hair is called PRP. There have been many uh, mixed thoughts and feelings and results about PRP as I've kind of searched the internet. Some people say it's like game changing, like this can really, really help your hair. Others say that it does nothing. I personally feel that it drastically reduced my hair shedding. As far as like actually keeping my hair in my head and preventing me from going bald, this I think is what did it. So PRP is platelet rich plasma. It is where they take a blood draw from your own arm, <laughs> your own blood. They spin the tube of it in a centrifuge and it comes out kind of in layers. There is the PPP, which is the platelet pore, platelet pore plasma. And then there is the PRP, which is the platelet rich plasma. And that is what they take to inject into your scalp. They just do injections all along the scalp. This process, it is painful. Um, I will say it is much more painful on the sides of my head personally than it is the top, but still it's injections. Uh, for me personally, I was not like numbed in any way, shape or form. But to be honest, it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Uh, one of the worst parts of it is the price. It is insanely expensive. It's so expensive. And you know, insurance doesn't cover stuff like this because it's cosmetic. You know, you don't need your hair to live. So it's purely cosmetic. I was very, very desperate to keep my hair, keep that in mind. I was very desperate. I was willing to do anything. I was going to pay any amount of money and I was I was fortunate enough to, you know, be able to have the ability to do so. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I, it's taken me so long to talk about this because I just feel like it's not, it's just not really an accessible treatment. So for three sessions of PRP, 
Uh, it was nearly $2,000 at the location that I went to, um, and I did it many, many times, many times, and I, like I said, desperate to keep my hair and to grow it back, like, I was willing to pay that amount of money, and it's, it's a lot of money. And I was thinking to myself, like, I'm gonna have to keep this up, like, for the rest of my life, and I was trying to do the math of, like, how much money over this many years it's gonna be, and it was, it's an insane amount. But I also was seeing results, so I'll show you guys the picture of when I first started my PRP treatment to I think it was six treatments in. Um, I'll show you guys the, the, the difference and I do think there was a fairly reasonable difference between the two pictures. Now with this condition that I have I feel like it's honestly a day-by-day -day thing. Some days I'm like yes my hair is looking full and thick and luscious um, and then other days I'm like wow like I can fully just see like my whole scalp my whole head. So like the six treatment after picture that you're seeing here like it, I think it looks pretty good for that day but like two days later it could have looked worse. But I do think there is a difference between the first picture and the second picture and that is why like I just I kept going back and spending so much money uh, because like I had this hope in me like this thought of hope that like maybe I could have a regular full head of hair. Uh, however, I have recently come across um, another place that I have been able to do PRP. It's also mixed in with another treatment called mesotherapy. Mesotherapy on its own, I don't really know how well it works for hair loss to be fully honest, but it is mesotherapy mixed with PRP. So this place, I called them just to kind of get like an estimate on how much it would be for a PRP treatment, and they told me $900 for one, and I was like, oh, Okay. But then they told me they have like this club basically where you pay $179 a month and you can get any procedure you want basically. Um, so now instead of paying $2,000 for three treatments, I'm now paying $2,000 for like 12 treatments. So is that the correct math? Okay, I'm paying $2,148. So a little bit over $2,000 for a whole year of treatments versus like three months of treatments, which definitely um, is still incredibly expensive, but it's something that I can work into my budget a little bit easier and I can get done more often and hopefully have better results. That being said, it is insanely painful. This one is so much more painful than my PRP treatments. This one they have like a little like round thing like this with like seven needles sticking out of it and they all go in at the same time. To me personally, it's very painful. The lady that does it, she's like, if I were you, I would be bawling my eyes out right now. It's painful after my head stays sore for several days. Like it's, it's a pretty intensive experience. I know I keep saying that word, but man, hair restoration has been incredibly incredibly intensive for me. But if it works and I see even better results than PRP, I'm I, to me it's worth it. To me it's worth it to go through the pain, the cost, the time, you know, the sore head for a couple of days after. Like it, it, to me it's worth it and to others it might not be and I fully totally understand that. If you think I am crazy for doing all this stuff just to try to get my hair back, I get it. I do get it because it is a lot. But at the same time, if you're wanting to try some or any or all of these things to get your hair back, that is totally, totally up to you, totally your decision, and you shouldn't feel bad about it because it's your head, it is your hair, and it's it's only up to you. I am going to be trying out low-level laser light therapy, which is the, the silly little helmet with the laser lights in it that you've probably seen before. But I have heard from some reputable sources that it's actually something that can help your hair. Even when I went in for my first PRP treatments, I would get a low-level laser light therapy treatment before I did my PRP. So it is something that's offered like at dermatology offices and things like that. So I'm hoping that it might actually work. I, I have my helmet with all of you if you guys want to see it. I guess I could put it on for you. Here she is. Um, I did buy this like two years ago when I was in my fully desperate mode of trying to get my hair back. So I look like I'm in Devo. But for some reason after I bought it, I just, I honestly never used it. I think I used it once or twice. And then my mom said she did want to give it a try as well because she also has incredibly thin, fine hair. She has less of it than I actually do, um, which, you know, probably is where my genetic disposition for it comes from. Um, but you guys can see on the inside there, there's there's just tons of little like laser lights in it and it is supposed to stimulate the hair follicles and like the red near infrared light is supposed to to do something. But I have heard like Dr. Dre here on YouTube who is a dermatologist talk about this and she she says it works <laughs> and um, some other sources that I've seen have cited this as a possible like treatment for hair thinning and hair loss. So 
I'm gonna give it a try. I already have it, I bought it two years ago, I can't return it now, so why not go ahead and give it a try? Hopefully this has been a somewhat informative or helpful video. I'm sorry it has been very long. I've just, there's, there's, I do a lot of stuff. Uh, there's a lot of steps in my everyday like hair care routine, hair restoration routine. So I'm um, sorry it's been kind of a long video, but I hope it has been somewhat helpful for anybody out there. Again, I'm so sorry that this might not be the most accessible, cheap, easy to do kind of hair care thing, but there are small things you can incorporate into your everyday that could have an improvement on your hair. And again, just make sure you're talking to your doctor to figure out what's truly causing it. Um, because if it is just something like, you know, maybe you're really low on like vitamin D and that's causing your hair to shed. If you start taking vitamin D, then you don't need to do <laughs> the rest of this, you know? So uh, definitely talk to your doctor to figure out what's going on with you. Uh, but yeah, that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you guys so very much for all of your support in this. It has been truly remarkable to me just to see like how much the community has come together to just support everybody who's going through something like this right now. Um, it's really, it's really nice to see. And just thank you guys so very much for that. I am very, very lucky to have you all. And just thank you guys for watching. Please go ahead and consider subscribing if you would not mind. It would mean the absolute world to me. And I just hope you guys have a world I just hope you guys have a lovely, wonderful, fantastic day, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye!